So, if he releases the bird from the edge of the cliff with an initial perfectly horizontal velocity of 18 meters per second, how long will it take to reach the ground? How far will it travel in that time? How fast was it moving just before it hit the ground? And finally, at what angle does it strike the ground? So, uh, let me start by drawing a little picture of what's going on here. I expect the bird will continue to move to the right at the exact same rate of 18 meters per second, but it will pick up an additional velocity in the downward direction. So overall, it should arc like a parabola downward until it reaches the ground. Now part A of the question asks how long will it take until it reaches the ground? All right. Well, to answer that, let's set up Again, a list of what we know and a list of what we need. First, I know that my initial velocity in the x horizontal direction is 18 meters per second. And my initial velocity in the y direction is 0 meters per second. The reason I know this is my initial uh, vector doesn't point up or down at all. The problem states he launched it perfectly horizontally. Now. If that were different, if I had uh, JRandom launching up at some angle, I would have to get these two known values by breaking it into its x and its y components based on what angle he used to launch. Luckily for this problem, I don't have to worry too much about that. It's easy to break down a horizontal vector into x and y components. So that's not too bad. I also know my acceleration in the x direction is 0 meters per second squared, and I know my acceleration in the y direction is 9.81 meters per second squared downward. So I threw a negative out front. Now I was kind of bad and didn't start out by declaring my directions in the first place. So let me go ahead and do that now. Up is positive, down is negative, right is positive, left is negative. Cool. I'm also going to declare my starting x position as 0, and my starting y position as 20 meters. Um, this is because I declared up to be positive, so since I'll be landing on the ground, let's call that uh, 0. And up on the cliff, that's 20 meters vertically. I'll go ahead and call the starting position 0 horizontally. Wherever I end will be my horizontal distance. So I also know my final distance in the y direction, my final y position, should be zero, because it lands on the ground. Now the question's telling me what I need to know. How long will it take to reach the ground? Uh, that's time. How far will it travel horizontally? That's my final x position. How fast was it moving just before it hit the ground? So that's my total final velocity. And at what angle? So that gets me essentially my needs list. Just time in seconds, distance in the x direction in meters, velocity in meters per second, and theta, an angle. I'll do that in degrees. But there's what I know, there's what I need to know. So, I can hop over to some of my equations. I've got a few more to choose from now, but the first question's asking how long it takes until it strikes the ground. So what clues me in is the ground is vertically below where I'm starting. So I probably need to start in the y direction. So I'm looking at my position, velocity, and combo equations all in the y direction. The first part of the question is asking me how long until it strikes the ground. Probably not going to use the combo equation because that doesn't even have time in it. So I'm just going to put a single line through it because I'm probably going to need to come back to it later. Maybe. We'll see. I uh, can't really use the velocity equation yet because I don't know how fast I'm traveling at the end. So I don't have my final velocity. But look at the distance equation. I know my final position 0. My starting position was 20. My initial velocity in the y direction was 0. And I know my acceleration in the y direction, so now all I'm left to do is solve for t. So let me grab that equation only and start to solve for t. Since again in this example my initial velocity in the y direction is zero, I can just take that term out. And that's not too bad. So I've got dy minus d naught y all over the acceleration in the y direction 
and the whole thing multiplied by 2 to solve for t squared. If I want to solve for t, I'll take a square root of that bad boy. Well, now I can go through and enter my known values. So I've got t equals the square root of 2 times my final position, 0, minus my initial position, 20, all over negative 9.81, my acceleration. If I simplify that down, I end up with t being the square root of negative 40 over negative 9.81. Now these two negatives will cancel, and that's good news, because I need to be able to take a square root to find time, and I can't take square root of a negative number. I end up with about 2.02 .02 seconds from launch to land. Nice. I ought to be able to take the total time of flight away from my need list, put that up in what I know. I know that the total time of flight is 2.02 .02 seconds. Now time is the beautiful bridge between the x and y components of motion, because neither of them can escape time. So I can still use this time value if I'm using an x equation or a y equation, and that's kind of nice. So I need to solve for the distance in the x direction. And here we go. I've already got my equation set up solving for the variable that I want to know. The distance in the x direction equals my initial distance in the x direction plus my initial velocity in the x direction times time plus one half my acceleration in the x direction times time squared. Now here's a couple of beautiful things. One, I defined zero as my starting position. So I get to cross that out. Two, since this is in free fall, there is no acceleration in the x direction. Literally nothing pushing this bird left or right. Just gravity pulling it down. So all I'm left with is my distance in the x direction is just my initial velocity in the x direction times time. Well shoot, that's 18 meters per second times 2.02 .02 seconds. Hot dog. And that comes out to be uh, about 36.4 meters. Or thereabouts. Sweet. There's another thing I can move from my unknown or my need list to my known list. Alright. Now I just need my final velocity and the angle at which it strikes. So let's look at that final velocity. Well, I know that ultimately when this bird lands, it'll be traveling down and to the right. So it'll have a velocity pointing somewhere in this direction, right before it strikes the ground. Well, that velocity is gonna have an X component and it's gonna have a Y component. Ultimately, I'm tasked with finding the value of the velocity as well as the angle theta. Here it's marked below the horizontal. By the way, this is the same angle here. Okay, so I need to find v and I need to find theta. Before I can find either of those, I need to find vx and vy separately from one another, then bring it all back together. Well, I can find my velocity in the x direction with the velocity equation for horizontal vectors. This one's particularly easy because the acceleration is just zero in the x-direction. It's not being pushed left or right. So that means my final velocity in the x-direction is the same as my initial velocity in the x-direction, which was 18 meters per second. Hmm, all right. Well, let's do the same thing in the y-direction. This time I know my initial y-velocity was zero, but my acceleration in the y-direction is not because gravity pulls in the y-direction. So I'll ultimately get my velocity in the y direction will be, let's see, negative 9.81 meters per second squared times the time, which was 2.02 .02 seconds. You end up with a y velocity that's a downward 19.82 meters per second. So let's throw those values here. Since I've already got downward marked, I don't need to worry too much about the negative because negative simply means downward, and I can already see that with my picture. The x direction was still 18 meters per second, and now I just need to solve for v and for theta.
Now that I've got my total x and my total y, I just need to plug this into the Pythagorean theorem and solve for the final velocity. And I end up getting around 26.8 meters per second. Uh, which, by the way, is just about 60 miles per hour. That bird is booging it. I also need to solve for theta, the angle at which it lands, and for that I'm just going to use tangent. And that's simply the opposite side over the adjacent side. To solve for theta itself, I'll take an arctangent, and it comes out to be around 47.7 degrees. So after all this, simply from the launch angle of the bird, the height of the cliff the bird fell off, I was able to figure out exactly where it will land, exactly when it will land there, how fast it'll be going when it lands there, and at what angle. That's a lot. So we will practice this a bit in class.